thanks for coming, everybody. First of all, I'm Sam. I'm with Hammer in Hand. Uh, a lot of Hammer in Hand folks are here. That's great. This is uh, a project we call Glasswood, um, and it's the first uh, certified passive house commercial retrofit in the United States. So you're standing in a first here. Um, there are a lot of great uh, things about this house that are typical to passive house, and this is an opportunity for us to talk about them um, sort of in a technical sense while they're before they're installed and, and talk about the principles that um, go behind all these pieces of equipment and the assemblies that, that we've uh, put together here. And then uh, when the building's done, this will be a restaurant down below called Chico, which will be sort of a mostly Mexican restaurant. And then upstairs, this space will be um, the home of Hammer and Hand's home performance team. Um, it's important to note this building, the, only the top floor here is, is a certified passive house space. Down below is still a high performance building, but it's impossible for us right now to overcome um, the air exchanges and temperature differentials created by the commercial cooking equipment and ventilation equipment. So there's a lot of great um, high performance things about the restaurant that make it totally unique among restaurants, but we'll save that for another time. Um, so this will be an office space. Uh, its occupancy is slated to be about 10 people, which seems like not that much, but it will have some other uses uh, where it'll fill up with a lot of people like it does right now. And one of the principles in passive houses is that we have an airtight structure to help with um, energy efficiency. Uh, so when you take a space that's planned for air, 10 people and you make it airtight and then you put 80 people in it, you could have some indoor air quality issues. And so we handle that in passive house in normal uses and then higher uses using a heat recovery ventilation unit. This is a Zender unit from uh, Germany. This basically brings in fresh air and exhaust air from inside the building to the outside over a heat exchanger. So it takes the energy that's inside the building and transfers it to the fresh air coming to, from the outside. Um, this unit will have a carbon dioxide sensor so that uh, by itself, automatically, when the carbon dioxide levels rise slightly in the building, it'll ramp up in a variable speed fashion. So when you go from 10 people to 80 people, this will go from 120 CFM all the way up to 300 plus CFM to make sure there's enough fresh air and oxygen for the building. Um, it's uh, also used not just for ventilation, but for uh, the distribution of the heating and the cooling, which is done by a ductless mini split. The head will be up there where those pipes come in the wall, and uh, it's a high efficiency um, Mitsubishi unit, and it just dumps out hot or cold from that spot. There'll be an intake for this unit right here, and as it goes, uh, as this unit brings in fresh air, the hot or cold energy from that ductless mini split will enter that system through the heat exchanger and be distributed throughout the building. This unit actually also takes in in the kitchen and the bathroom space, so it provides fresh air ventilation and evacuation from those spaces too. So we're using high efficiency equipment uh, to do a number of different purposes at once together, and that's all figured out through what we call the Passive House Planning Package, which is a, basically a spreadsheet that has a lot of um, history and big thought behind it, where we enter all the parameters of the building and then sort of see how much, uh, how well the building performs in terms of heat load, cooling load, mm -hmm. um, the total bulk energy usage, and then we enter in our air tightness. And our air tightness is basically this layer here, this oriented strand board, OSB, and this green tape um, is the bulk of our air tightness layer. You're standing on it, it's behind this two by four frame that you see exposed and it goes on the ceiling too. Um, so one of the other measures we have to hit to be a certified passive out space is an air tightness measure. We have to be at 0.6 air changes per hour at 50 pascal. It's a little too technical, but um, we're going to do a blower door fan test briefly after this just for fun. If you've never seen one, it's kind of fun. And we've tested this one already and it's, it's better than 0.6, so we are confident that we won't fail in front of a crowd. Um, this air tightness layer uh, meets up with the windows uh, through a system of liquid flashing that we install in the window rough openings. Uh, and then the air tightness layer basically doesn't really matter that much. It becomes a weather resistant barrier on the outside as it ties into the rain screen and wraps around. So we are sealing the windows positively to uh, the liquid applied membrane, which is on the inside of the ROs. It's hard to see here, but um, it's this white goop and then the pink goop and the red goop. You can look at a window, <laughs> it's technical terms. It's a wet flash system. 
Uh, it was de actually developed here in Portland, and it's distributed by a manufacturer um, out of Kansas. Um, and uh, this, or this green tape that you see here is uh, made by a company called Sega, and um, it's an extremely sticky tape. It's made to be compatible with this material, and interestingly enough, it has the same um, vapor permeability as this material, so we don't get any differential vapor diffusion between this green tape and this. With the Passive House, we're trying to build vapor open assemblies that can drive both to the inside and the outside. Um, what else? The other interesting things here, with these windows are a Canadian built window. Here they're triple pane fiberglass frame with insulation in the frame. So this is a very efficient airtight window. Um, it's installed in the center of the 12 inch thick wall. The wall itself is basically the original frame of the building is behind this OSB. Those are the original two by fours with some exceptions. Uh, outboard of that is the structural sheathing two inches of uh, expanded polystyrene foam and then the ubiquitous yellow dens glass that you see on the outside of most commercial products right now. Over that is a 60 minute basically tar paper that interfaces for bulk water management with our flashing on the outside. Um, to the inside, we, it becomes the t this OSB becomes the air tightness layer as I mentioned and then we put this layer inboard of that, really separate of this, to protect this air tightness layer because it's crucial and very important and fragile. This gives us a place to run our wires and our pipes that you see over here in the bathroom without interrupting that air tightness layer. And where we do interrupt it out of necessity, these are the intake and uh, outflow for the, this HRV unit. We have a, a well-managed system uh, with an emphasis on eff effective uh, and efficacy and simplicity of air tightness here. We have a, a wet flash product that spans gaps um, to this penetration. These overlap that for insulation, and we have um, a really good interface. Um, in that corner, we have a heat pump hot water heater, which is not necessarily experimental, but they're fairly new to the market and new to Passive House. Um, it's a heat pump inside the heated envelope, so it's gonna be pulling heat from the building and putting it into the hot water tank, which is kind of detrimental in the winter when we have heat demand. But good in the summer when we have a cooling demand in this space in particular, we have a higher demand for cooling in the summer than we do for heat in the winter.